I think the thing that people need to realize is that materials affect your life almost 24 7. Okay? Um, I'll give you a trivial example. Uh, many years ago, we went and we got what's called a Tempur-Pedic mattress, which is this shape memory foam. And I have found that the quality of my sleep has improved since getting that, and in particular, the pillows. Okay? And so there I am for eight hours a day on something which was a material that I believe actually was developed for NASA. Okay? And, you know, uh, I lay down on it, I sleep better. And it's not the super high-tech material, but it's things that affect your lives. I think that you know, one obvious way in which materials affect your life is in food packaging. Um, I think that the, having good food packaging has had a substantial role in cutting down on the number of bacteria that we end up getting. Uh, many other cases where materials affect your lives. Uh, I wear glasses, uh, I've noticed you wear glasses, my glasses are high index glasses. They're much lighter than they would otherwise be. Okay? Um, and it's not coincident that these materials have the properties that they do. Uh, currently there are all kinds of things that are used inside the body. Um, when I was a kid, if I had a tooth filling, it was made out of silver mercury amalgam. Now it's made out of uh, some kind of polymeric composite. And so no matter where you look, new materials and improved materials are affecting your life. Um, other example is if you look at things as simple as building materials, okay, um, concrete is much stronger than it is. Buildings are more earthquake resistant as a consequence of this. Airplanes are having less and less metal, more and more composite materials so that they are lighter, they're more fuel efficient, and it just keeps going. Um, so new materials have a way of improving our lives in that they can impact our health. They can certainly impact both the manner in which we make, transport, and utilize energy, uh, which is going to be a very important thing. I think that as we look more worldwide, as perhaps compared to the UK or the United States, areas of water purification, which impure water is something that a huge part of the world suffers from. Um, Materials can improve our ability to deliver pure water to large segments of the world's population. So those are just a few examples of how you know, new materials and improved materials certainly can impact people's lives. I think that there are a few areas. I'm going to give you, I'm going to use recent on, on multiple time scales. Okay? Okay. Um, I would say that if we take a slightly longer view in terms of not stuff that we're reading in the New York Times today or, you know, um, The Guardian today, um, but we go back 50 years, silica and silicon have been around for an awful long time, but if you think about what's happened as we have developed the, the capability of making these things extraordinarily pure, okay, they've had completely transformative impacts. The whole concept of integrated circuitry as we know it today would not exist were it not for the fact that people developed ways of making ultra pure silicon. The vast majority of photovoltaic cells today are silicon based photovoltaic cells 
And so here is a simple, it's an element. It's been around since the beginning of man time, but our ability to get it into a form of very, very high purity, uh, I think has impacted everyone's life. I would say likewise, silica, okay, has had a very large impact on people's lives. Uh, huge amounts of information now get moved around through optical fibers. That is the mechanism by which information, large amounts of information, are moved over long distances. And so uh, the point there is that um, these are material advances that have had profound impacts, but they're not exotic materials. I mean, silica is, is probably, silicon dioxide is probably the most, com most abundant material on the face of the earth. So they don't have to be new materials. They can be old materials that are processed in a different way. I think examples of new materials that have had a uh, significant impact are things that people are using in um, biotechnology. Okay? Uh, I just saw that it was announced very recently that Bob Langer got the Priestley Medal. Okay? And Bob has done amazing things in the area of polymers for drug delivery, for time release of drugs, and for creating, for example, a tissue scaffold for regenerative medicine. I think that these are two areas that are relatively new and that are clearly having impacts on people's lives. And the tissue engineering, I think, is going to continue to have a huge impact on people's lives. I think another area that's related are thin film technologies. Um, and uh, the ability of controlling things with monolayers. Um, uh, this ranges from work that people, for example, like George Whitesides are doing on microfluidics so that they can make sensors that can be used for healthcare that are printed on paper and can be deployed to places that don't even have electricity. So that you can monitor disease in, um, in third world countries. Um, this, is a, this is a very good example of, of developing an understanding of chemistry and of course, you know, Langmuir started doing work on this um, probably a hundred years ago, but that's, that's one example. Another example is the use of surface modifiers in terms of affecting biocompatibility of materials or in just in general the compatibility of materials. This has a profound role in our ability to make stable composites and I think that that's an other area that is somewhat recent where we've seen some very significant advances. Organic materials in general I think are becoming much much more um, complex in terms of their function as opposed to the commodity materials that we think of when we think of polyvinyl chlorine or polystyrene. Um, and that's for a variety of different reasons. Uh, these materials are now finding use in optoelectronic situations such as light emitting diodes or photovoltaics. And I think that these are areas where there will be a huge impact. Um, but also, I think another area that's advancing very rapidly and how it's going to manifest itself in terms of uh, applications is still not completely defined. But the ability for people to make monodisperse nanomaterials and macromolecules. Uh, making polymers by living polymerization techniques, making dendrimers that are monodispersed, making small either semiconductor nanoparticles or metal nanoparticles that are nanodispersed or metallic cubes, various different shape materials that are, are monodispersed, I think are going to be very, very important. And we're already beginning to see these things being used as carriers um, for treatment of cancer, for imaging 
And I think that these are clearly emerging technologies. Another area of emerging technology are self-healing materials. Okay? Materials that either respond themselves to stress and strain where there's a problem and heal themselves, or that you can just, for example, heat them and they, they, they actually heal. These are, I think, some other new emerging areas where materials chemistry and materials science is going to have a profound impact. Smart materials in general, I think, are going to have a substantial impact on people's lives. Uh, and by smart materials, I mean materials that um, not only sense uh, a stimulus, but that react in a manner that um, provides a function to the stimulus. A trivial example of that are photochromic glasses. They react to the fact that sunlight shines on them and then they become dark, okay, giving you the protection from the sun that you need. I think that there are numerous opportunities for materials to actually not act, simply sense something which goes to an actuator that does something else, but where you actually build into the material itself the sensitivity and the response. And so I think these are uh, areas that are emerging that are going to be having a substantial impact in people's lives over a period of the next 10 to 20 years. So this is a general factor to consider. I think that one of the things that is going to be a, uh, an area in energy is the notion of using earth abundant materials. And I think that this is one of the um, driving forces, for example, for people to um, consider their choices of electrodes that they use, their choices of um, materials that, well, silicon is a very abundant material, okay? There's also not only the issue of the abundance of the material um, when it comes to energy applications, but the, um, the energy efficiency associated with producing the material and whether the material itself can be produced in a, a sustainable green way. So uh, I think that that's the important, I think that's an important thing, the fact that the materials are earth abundant. I think that an other area that's becoming increasingly important, and we're seeing more and more work that's being uh, done in this, is to have environmentally friendly materials and processes. And I think that, um, you know, one of the areas in which I work is organic electronics, uh, substrates that I think we think about for organic electronics as we think about um, very wide-scale deployment of disposable materials. Um, we need to start thinking about how are we going to make the materials that we use things that themselves are uh, either biologically and environmentally benign or biodegradable. And so I think that we're going to see more and more work in areas like that, and that's going to require work at various different interfaces. It's not simply material science per se, but it's material science combined with catalysis, combined with biochemistry. Okay, and I think that these are areas that are are emerging that are going to play a substantial factor in people's lives as we look over the next, say, 15, 20 years.